Lord, we come this morning with uh, just joy and peace in our hearts as we gather together to worship you. Jenny's offering this morning was one that, that just was filled with peace and hope. And that's what you bring to us, Lord, and we are so thankful for it. 
We pray that you will just open your word to us, that you will um, help us find excitement in our hearts to learn and to know more about you and about this relationship we have. Help us, Lord, to find new love and new life in you. Amen. Let's stand and join in singing Ferris Lord Jesus as our opening hymn this morning. Thank you. I would ask that an usher would come forward at this time and we'll gather our morning offering. Lord, we bring our offerings to you this morning, and we just ask that you would uh, bless the giver and bless these gifts so that we may use them in a way that brings honor and glory to you. Let us reach into our community and into the world around us 
and help others come to know of your love. Amen. Glory be to the Father. seated. Thank you. Well, this has been a, a strange couple of days with all the rain and all the storms that have gone through, but I think maybe we didn't get quite as much as what they thought we would, so for that I'm thankful. My pontoon is not floating across the lake because it got loose or anything like that, so uh, what have, what's going on in your life this week that you know God had a hand in? How have you met God? Oh, Nancy. Oh, praise God. Yes. Good. Yes. She's way too young to have issues with that forever. So, yes. Good, good, good. Any others? Any? Uh, I guess there's so many things we can't do anymore. But you know what? I'm not helping us do the lost city still. Right. Thank you for that. Yep, yep. I don't know that looks us up, I guess. It's amazing, isn't it? When you think, I can't tackle that. And then you're just trying. Yep. Money? Oh, we met at uh, this uh, next Friday. It'll be 55 years that uh, we've been there. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> well, I think we, yeah, we better sing to them for sure. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Any other praises that we need to just lift up to the Lord this morning? What about prayer concerns? Are there issues or people that we need to lift up this week? Terry? The families in Florida. Yeah, the families that are down there, so. still waiting to find out about their loved ones in that condo disintegration. <laughs> Procedure on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Yeah. Good. So. She's had to wait a long time. Yeah. yeah. So prayers, but it helps with prayers also for her anxiety because it's rather hot right now. <laughs> Good. 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 I'm sure. Terry? And prayer for Nikki and I that it doesn't rain next Saturday. <laughs> our, We're going to have about 50 people in our little cottage. Our little cottage is just a cottage. It's not a big lake house and we're praying that it does not rain with, for our reunion that we're having. The, the Marker family hasn't been together for all of them for about 20 years. So we just thought we needed to try to at least give them the opportunity. Cousins don't know their cousins' kids at all or anything like that. So we're going to have a reunion. So. Or Homer and Eleanor. Homer and Eleanor, okay. Everybody traveling, okay. Becky? Continued prayers for Matt, his wife, all the problems, and his family. Okay. Okay. Money? Three years of these four-year college, uh, he, he moved, he's got his own place now. 
Okay. That's, a, that's a big thing for him and also for our son. I can say for his parents, yes. It sure so, is. Okay. They were real, they were real close. And actually, he's not moving that far away. <laughs> that's okay. The, when they're out of the house, uh, you know, that's a big move. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Well, let's go to the Lord, and we'll just take some time to talk with him, okay? Lord, we come this morning, and we're, we're thankful that um, we've not had quite as much rain as they had predicted earlier on in this, this uh, weather pattern that we've kind of gotten caught in. We do thank you for the rain we've had. The farmers needed it, and it has been, um, I think, slow enough that it has really done some good. And when I, we drove down this morning and saw how much the corn had grown just in a couple of days, it was amazing. So I just thank you that you've given us a, 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 a place where it's not just been um, a disaster in the making. And, and just speaking about disasters, we think of the, the families in Florida that are still waiting to hear about their loved ones as they sip through the rubble of the, the apartment house that collapsed. We pray for them to, to just have peace in this waiting and that um, they'll be able to, to find some closure as they continue to uh, dig through the rubble. We want to lift up our friends, Homer and Eleanor. We know right now that uh, they're having to make some life-changing decisions. And uh, we pray, Lord, that those decisions will be uh, just the right ones to help them be comfortable in the next years of their life. Be with them and with their family as they continue to, to try to decide what is best. We lift up Rosie to you, Father, and we ask that you would just calm her in these days before her back procedure. And we pray that you be with the surgeon on Wednesday and, and just help him, Lord, or her to, um, to just have a steady hand and be able to, uh, to, to make Rosie more comfortable. We are asking for traveling mercies for all of those that will be on the road as they uh, travel for the holiday weekend coming up. Keep them safe. Just get them to their destinations. We lift up Matt and his family. We pray that, um, that Matt will decide that it, the medication is good for his condition and that he does need his family and, and their support and that they can reconnect and, and find a way that they can uh, be a family again. We, we lift up Sam and this new venture of living on his own. Help him, Lord, to, uh, to just settle into that comfortably and, and be with his mom and dad and grandparents as they uh, watch him take these steps of independence. We lift up Heather and her family, especially her grandpa. We just um, know that this aging process can be pretty uh, uncomfortable sometimes. And so we ask that you just be with them all and give them patience and, and love for one another. And Lord, we pray for this church. We pray that as we go about the, the community outreach that we've done for years, that, that you would just um, help us to get it accomplished in a, a manner that is worthy of you. Help us to uh, realize that it is a joy to serve our, our community and our fellow man as we um, prepare a breakfast, as we serve it, as we find uh, ways to, uh, 
to offer you into our community so that those that may not know you personally will see that you are with us in all that we do and that you help us as we reach out to the world around us. Now, Lord, we, we join together as a, a family of God and we pray together as Jesus taught his disciples, his family, to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together in our next hymn, I Am Thine, O Lord. It'll be on the screen or number 419 in your hymnal. Our scripture this morning is Romans 1, uh, verses 1 through 18. Um, it's the whole first chapter of the book of Romans, so if you want to follow along or, or just sit back and listen. This is um, our friend Paul, Paul the Apostle Paul, writing this. He says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call the people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are 
loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus for all of you because of your faith, because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now, at last, by God's will, the way may be opened for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. This is going to be a little bit different form of sermon this morning. Um, it's more of an um, introduction or a, a getting you ready, okay? We are going to begin a new series, a sermon series, on July 11th, the, the week we get back. Next week, as you, we've talked about, you're going to have a lay speaker. His name is Dan Schumann. Um, he's been here, I think, before when we had an emergency surgery that we hadn't planned on. So he'll be here to, um, to lead you in worship next week because Terry and I will be taking next weekend off to recuperate from our family reunion. I just know that um, neither one of us will be in any kind of shape to stand up here and try to preach and think even a little bit next Sunday. So we're going to take that Sunday off. But the week after, we are going to begin this new uh, series. And we're telling you about it today because we want you to get ready. We want you to be ready. This is going to be kind of a lengthy series. We're going to go through the whole book of Romans over the next few months. Um, we'll take a look at it probably chapter by chapter. I don't, there may be some weeks that we just look at one or two verses, but most of the time it'll be at least a chapter a week that we're going to look at. We'll let you know the week before what to look at, what to read, what to study during the week, and um, then that's what we'll focus on on the next Sunday. Um, we're, I'm telling you this because um, I think it would be a good time over this next week for you to get out your Bibles. If you need to dust them off a little bit, that might be a good thing to do. Um, and, and even more than that, um, maybe it's time that you purchase a new Bible. I don't know what translations most of you uh, call your favorite. But maybe it's time to uh, get a new version, a new translation, something that might be a little bit easier for you to read and to understand than the one you're using. There are many on the market now. Um, there's, NIV has been around now for quite a while. It's a good, solid translation. There's one called the New Living Translation, there's another one that's the new King James. Um, if you are still loving the King James version, you might like this. It's pretty much the same, the same poetry and rhythm as the King James, but it, 
It doesn't have the, some of the words that we trip over, the these and thous and some of those kind of words in it so much. But there's a, there's a lot of them out there. And you could do some research and try to find um, a new translation that might be a little easier to read and understand. One thing that it does when you do change your translation from what you've been reading over years is that sometimes you see the word of God with new eyes. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've picked up a different translation, read a passage that I've read hundreds of times, but in that new translation, it makes me go, oh, wow, I never thought of it like that before. You know, it just helps, just helps it come to your mind a little better. So anyhow, um, at least try to find something that is easy to read and understand. Um, we ask that you each week do your homework. And that's simply to read the passages that we'll be talking about on Sunday. Now, I'll be happy if you read it once a week. I'd be happy. But I'd be ecstatic if you'd read it every day. Because uh, just like anything, the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. And the book of Romans is a really special book for all of us to study. Um, I remember when we were doing our theological studies, um, everybody, uh, all of the upperclassmen had told us, oh my goodness, just wait till you have to take Romans. You'll, you will think you're dying because it is um, so hard to understand and the professor is, is so knowledgeable in that particular book that he tended to expect all of his students to gain a lot from it. And I think every student that sat under him did gain a huge amount of understanding of what being a Christian should be all about, what it is all about. We are preaching this series because I think people that, that take the time to come to church, people that uh, have, have professed a, 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 a commitment to Jesus Christ really want to know what it means to live a Christian life. Many people today think it's just a matter of coming to church. And there is so much more to being a Christian than that. We were riding the other day in the car, and I, um, I heard a story on the radio. It was about a little boy that was playing on the beach, and he found a coin. He found a quarter in the sand. And he looked up and down the beach and noticed a, a lady sitting a little further down the beach. So he ran down the beach to her, and, and he said to her, he said, um, excuse me, lady, do, do you go to church every week? And she said, well, yes, I, I do. And he thought for a moment, and then he said, well, do you read your Bible every day? And she said, yes, I do. He said, well, do you pray every day? And she said, yep, I really do. And his response was, good, then I'll let you hold my quarter while I go play in the sand some more. He was counting on those disciplines that she practiced to be more than just an outward sign in her life. He was counting on those disciplines to have made such a difference in her life that he knew his coin would be safe with her. Well, the book of Romans will help us understand exactly what it is to be a Christian. It'll help us to, to know how to be sure of our salvation to be active in living out the good news of grace and salvation because we really understand them, not just because somebody told us about them. The book of Romans will help us live out our calling as a Christian so that others will know who we trust in and how we live as Jesus did. 
Now, let me just share a little bit about the book itself. Um, how many of you have friends that maybe you've never met face to face? Yeah, and especially in today's world with, you know, Facebook and texting and emailing and stuff, I have friends that I've shared really, you know, the depths of my heart with that I've not ever met face to face, but I, I just know they're my friend because we have talked. Well, that's kind of, that kind of describes Paul's relationship with the people in Rome. You see, Romans is a letter that he wrote in about the year 57 AD while he was staying in the seaport city of Corinth. He was taking a break because he'd been on a missionary journey all through Turkey and that area for years. He was um, on his way back to Jerusalem to hand deliver uh, uh, some offering money that he had collected from all the little churches that he had visited. And he was taking it to the Jerusalem Christian Church because it was a very poor church and it needed financial help. His plan was to go from Jerusalem to Rome to visit a church there that he had never seen, though he knew many of the people there personally and by reputation. From Rome, it was Paul's dream then to go on to Spain to begin planting Christian churches there. Paul realized that he might run into trouble in Jerusalem and that he might not make it out of there alive. So he took the time while he was resting and visiting in Corinth to write this long letter to the Roman church and to arrange to have a friend deliver it for him, um, which the friend did. In fact, the letter arrived a year or so before Paul actually got to Rome. Now, we know Paul as... St. Paul or the Apostle Paul. And today we recognize his authority. But in the days of the early church, his leadership credentials, they weren't so well accepted. He was kind of a controversial figure. He taught things about grace that, that many just refused to listen to. He taught about unity between the Jews and the Gentiles. And both sides kind of rejected that idea. There were many who believed that Paul should be silenced. Um, these enemies often spread rumors about him and they misrepresented his teachings. Paul wanted the Roman church to know him and to know what he believed. He wanted them to, to have a, a full understanding of the gospel about Jesus Christ. Not only so they would know Paul's beliefs, but so they would know what it means to know Jesus. That's why the book of Romans is called a comprehensive course in Christian living. It tells people what we need to believe, how we should put our beliefs into actions, and how all of that can work in our daily lives. Now, Romans is a really long letter when you compare it to all of the others in the Bible. There's over 1,250 words in this letter. It's Paul's most personal letter. It's his most theological letter, and it's his most practical letter. It's his most personal letter because he presents his credentials for leadership. He details his philosophy about life. He's candid about his struggles his failures, his battles with sin. He pours out his heart page after page. It's his most theological letter. In fact, it's almost like a, a treatise. Systematically, he uncovers what being a Christian is really all about and what Christian living involves. He discusses the deep truths of doctrine in a lot of detail. At the time Romans was written, Paul had been following Christ for about 25 years. And so Romans is written 
from the perspective of a mature, seasoned man of God. Now, it's also Paul's most practical letter because he devotes a great deal of space to telling people how to live together in peace and unity and holiness. For these reasons, the book of Romans has had tremendous impact on Christians throughout history. Many great Christians were converted because they read the book of Romans. One example is St. Augustine. You probably don't recognize that name, but he was one of the greatest theologians of the early church. He lived in about the, fourth, uh, the end of the 4th and beginning of the 5th century. Another great name that you might be a little more familiar with is Martin Luther. He came to understand what grace means because of the words in Romans 1.17 where it says the righteous shall live by faith. He said those words hit him like a thunderbolt from heaven. His life was never the same. He spent the rest of his ministry preaching salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Romans was Luther's favorite book in the Bible. He said this about Romans in his preface to the epistle of Romans. He said, It's worthy not only that every Christian should know it word for word by heart, but occupy himself with it every day as the daily bread of the soul. It can never be read or pondered too much, and the more it is dealt with, the more precious it becomes and the better it tastes. Luther's commentary leads us to another great Christian who was greatly influenced by the Book of Romans. That was John Wesley, the founder of our own Methodist denomination. Wesley had, had been an Anglican priest all of his adult life. One night, he was attending a Bible study, and Luther's preface was being read. Wesley said, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I knew I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. This one night changed Wesley's life and the direction of the Christian church forever. There is another believer that I can tell you about who was dramatically influenced by the book of Romans, although I don't think she deserves to be mentioned with the names like I've just spoken of. And that's me. I was probably about 35 years old when I, I really decided that I had to get serious about my faith. I became really interested in spiritual things. I began attending church church regularly and really listening to the sermons. I started reading my Bible and we took part in a, a three-year-long Bible study that um, t walked us all the way through the whole Bible. And I, I just talked with people about their faith, people that were not afraid to to tell me what they believed and why they came to believe that. At about that time in my life, I think my idea of salvation was a lot like a lot of people's. I think I believed that on judgment day, my good deeds and my bad deeds would be weighed on a, some sort of a special scale by God, and you know, whichever was the greater, that would determine where I spend eternity. And then one Sunday morning, I was sitting in church, and the preacher was explaining a portion of text from Romans. He said that God has shown us a different way to heaven, not just by being good enough, not by keeping the laws, but by a new way. Now, as I read the Bible, I found out that it really wasn't a new way. It had been talked about all through the Bible. The preacher said that God says he will accept and acquit us, everyone, anyone, and declare them not guilty if we trust in Jesus Christ to take away our sin. 
Now that just seemed like it was way too simple. But as I read the book of Romans, as I really studied it, as I began to read more and more scripture and, and think about it, I began to understand that that's exactly what Jesus was saying. I can't, I can't fully describe the impact the words had on me that morning other than I turned into just a blubbering mess sitting there in the pews because my heart just melted in that moment. I understood what it, it really meant to become a Christian. I understood that salvation is a gift from God, a gift. Freely given to anyone that asks. It's not something that we can earn or that we deserve. It's something we simply receive. And in receiving that gift, it changes the course of our life. It kind of starts us over with a brand new life and a never-ending adventure. It was through the book of Romans that I first experienced the touch of God's grace in my life. We, I can't remember what year it was, Terry, that we went on the Emmaus Walk, early 90s. It was then that I began to truly understand this word grace and all the different aspects of God's grace. And I, I know as we move through this series on Romans that we will all understand grace better when we get to the, the far side of that book. Someone made a kind of a, a joking comment that grace is getting what you don't deserve. Think about that. Getting what you don't deserve. Most importantly, as we study the book of Romans, we will come to know Jesus Christ better. Now, some of you have known him for years, but I guarantee you will know him more personally, more completely. And there may be some of us that, that just have kind of a passing knowledge of him. And you will fall in love with him. So Romans is a comprehensive course in living the Christian life. The big issue in, in this letter of Paul's to the Roman church is how anyone can come to be right with God on that final day of judgment. He proclaims that right standing comes only through faith in Jesus Christ. Chapters 1 through 11 will teach us all about what God has done for everyone who believes in Jesus. And in verses, or chapters 12 through 16, it'll show us how believers ought to live in response to the lavish grace of God. Now, here's a question, or here's a statement. I want you to hear me very well. Do you have any questions today? That's your cue. This whole series is going to be a little more like a Bible study and a little less like a traditional sermon. Okay? When you're doing your, your lesson during the week, when you're reading scripture, uh, whatever the assignment is for the week, I hope you will uh, take time to journal as you read. Write down those thoughts that pop into your head. Do you know that's the Holy Spirit talking to you? That is why they say God's word is alive. Is because the Holy Spirit can, can just uh, use those words as little knocking moments to say, hey, listen, I want to say something directly to you. So, Keep a, a notebook handy with your Bible and jot down any of those aha moments that you find as you're reading. 
And if you come up with a question, write it down. Because on Sunday morning, we're going to take time to hear those questions. And if Terry and I can't come up with an answer for them, we know a lot of people that we can pick their brains and we'll find answers and bring it back. For those that are watching on YouTube and Facebook, you can use the comment button to ask your question. Just put it on there and we'll check later in the, the afternoon after we get home and we'll try to answer those questions too. So you're going to, every week you're going to hear, do you have any questions today? And I pray that you feel comfortable enough to ask those questions because it's in asking questions that we truly can grow. And that's what this is all about. Um, another thing I, I want you to do as you're reading through the book of Romans, and you might take this next two weeks um, to read the whole book one time through. You should be able to do that in, in a two-week span. But I, I challenge you to find a verse or two from the book of Romans that, that speaks directly to your heart. Um, I'm going to share my, what I call my personal life's verses with you. They're from the, the book of Romans, chapter 8, beginning with verse 28. And it, it goes to the end of the chapter, verse 39. So this is what the words that, that really touch me and keep my life on track. It says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? It is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I hope you can find verses in this letter to the Romans that touch your heart as those words touch mine. So remember, next week you're going to have a, a guest preacher, but don't wait to get started on reading Romans. That first lesson will be Romans 1, verses 1 through 7. And I, I just suggest that you maybe find a friend or family member to invite to come along with you, and we'll take this journey together. Um, it's, it's exciting when you have someone personally that you can talk to about what you're reading and what you're understanding and what you're thinking. So um, find somebody to come along with you on this journey through the book of Romans. And we'll all uh, get to know Paul and Jesus 
better over the next few months. So I will close my talking to you and we'll sing our closing hymn this morning. So let's stand and join together and sing Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Number 365 or on the screen. As you leave today, I want you to just take that one word, grace. I want you to chew on that for a while. I want you to to think about how Jesus has um, made it possible for you to be a Christian, for you to be sure of your salvation, for you to be sure where you will spend eternity instead of having to worry about whether you have done enough good to outweigh the bad in your life. So take that grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus with you this week and clothe yourself with it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.